Everybody, welcome back. I haven't been making a lot of videos lately, just life's got the best of me, things have been really crazy. Most of my videos to date have assumed that you know how to compile your C programs, but I've actually recently had a bunch of requests looking at how do we compile programs, especially programs that have multiple different source files. And so today, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's get into it. Often we think of our C compiler as a magic box. We take our source code, we stick it into the box and out pops a executable binary. But obviously it's a lot more complicated than that. And hopefully in the next few minutes, that'll make more sense to you. So I'm gonna use Clang for my examples. You could also use GCC, it, it shouldn't make any difference. So let's start out with a simple program. It doesn't have to be Hello World, but it can be. And in this case, I'm just gonna use Hello World because it will serve our purposes. And now you can see I can simply compile it on the command line. In goes the C code and out comes the executable binary. And this is where we get the idea of this magic black box. It's this program that we just ran and it produced executable code. But really this happens in stages. First, the C code is pre-processed. That means includes, pound defines, any macros. These things all get resolved. You basically end up with one big block of C code. Then that C code is actually compiled compiled from C to assembly code. The assembler then takes the assembly code and generates binary executable code in these object files, the, these .o files, and then the .o files are linked together by the linker and that produces your executable binary. And sometimes you'll hear people refer to a compiler as a tool chain, and this is what they mean. It's not actually just one tool, it's a whole bunch of tools that are working one after the other to convert this code into something useful, but it happens in stages. It's a bunch of different tools. So in that recent example, I just ran it all of these stages all together as one. But it's useful to know that you can actually just run one stage or another, and so you don't have to run this whole tool chain all in one shot. It's useful, for example, to be able to see what the preprocessor is actually doing to your C code, or be able to see what kind kind of assembly code is being generated from your C code. But let's face it, most programmers don't spend a lot of time looking at pre-processed C code or looking at assembly code. And so why am I telling you this? And the reason I'm telling you this is that building your projects gets a little more complicated as your projects get more complicated. So let's add another C file to our example. For those of you who are just beginning, maybe you haven't ever done this before, maybe all of your programs have just been in one C file. As your projects get more complex, it's really handy to be able to organize your code into modules or libraries or components, whatever you wanna call them. But the idea is that is that you have these, these pieces pieces of your code that logically fit together. They maybe they work, they have a particular task that they were doing together. I don't want to re-implement a linked list for every project of mine that needs one. I'd prefer to have one chunk of code that I use in all of my different projects that implements my linked list functionality. And if I fix a bug in one of those, if I find a bug in my linked list, I want to fix it once and have it fix it in all of my projects. And this is going to make your code easier to read, easier to understand, and easier to maintain. It also makes it a little portable. It's easier to actually take code from one project and use it in the other. So I have this extra C file over here, it has some functions in it. I wanna call those functions from my main function. So I can still compile these with one command. I can still list them all on the command line, basically just list all the C files, and this is gonna work. It's basically going to just take all of this, all of these C files and just compile them all together into one program. But I can also compile each of the C files into object files independently. And then in a final stage, I can link all the object files into a single binary. And this is actually a really common pattern that you're gonna see a lot of projects do, but it may not be clear to you why. So first of all, this approach feels more organized to me. If there are errors in one particular component or module, I can deal with those one module at a time. It feels, it feels organized, it feels modular. It makes me at least feel organized. And finally, breaking up your code into individual files and compiling them separately can actually make compiling faster. Now, I know for most of you, you don't really think of compilation as something that takes a lot of time. Most student projects are pretty simple. You're not used to it taking more than a couple of seconds. But for the non-believers out there, go compile the Linux kernel and it could take you a half an hour. It could take you an hour. It depends on the machine you're running on. It depends on a lot of factors. But as your projects become more complex, compilation can actually become a factor. And if you can save yourself some time, that's gonna be very valuable. So that's what we wanna do today. We wanna set up a project where just the pieces that we've changed actually need to be recompiled. And, and so how we do that is we simply just compile each of our .c files into a .o file. And then, like I said before, then we just use the linker, link them all together in a binary at the end. Now, if I change one of those .c files, I still have to recompile that .c file into a .o file and do the relinking stage, but I don't have to go back and recompile each of my .c files. So as I build up a lot of different components, a lot of different modules, a lot of different c files, this can save me a lot of time. I don't have to recompile all of them. So we use the dash c option to say just compile the 
.c file to the .o file. And of course, if you're typing this yourself into the terminal all the time, this is gonna mean more commands, more typing, and this may seem really tedious, but this is where I wanna stop you and say, you shouldn't be typing any compile commands on your own. You should instead be using something like make or some other build system to automate your build process. So I'm assuming you'll have something like a make file and that it's gonna look something like this. And you'll notice that I have targets for compiling each of my .c files to .o files, and then I have a final stage that does the linking. And I can simplify this even more by using automatic variables and make. And now anytime I type make, it's gonna compile my program. And best of all, it's only gonna compile the parts that have changed. So if I've changed one of my .c files, that's gonna get recompiled, but I'm not gonna to have to compile the rest of the project. So if any of that stuff on make was mysterious to you, I do have some other make videos by all means please go look them up. I'll link to them in the description so you can find them easily. Make is a great tool that you definitely want to know. But anyway, that's it for today. That's how you take multiple C files and compile them into a single unified binary executable. I did also mention libraries, and I don't have time today to add libraries to this video, but I promise in a future video we'll talk about how to make libraries and make your code even more portable than it already is. And so that's all I have for you today. I hope this is helpful. I hope it helps you on your next project. And so until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you later.